In this video, I'm gonna explain how to train for pure muscle growth, and I'm gonna lay out five crucial bodybuilding principles that must be followed to maximize your muscular development. This video isn't about how to get stronger. It isn't about how to get both bigger and stronger. This video is about maximizing pure muscle gain. Chapter one, tension is king. Okay, so the first non-negotiable principle is that tension is king. At this point, tension is universally recognized as the primary factor driving muscle growth. Tension is the force that our muscles experience when they stretch and contract under load. If you think of each muscle fiber as a rope in a tug of war, that stretching and pulling on the rope is tension. And that tension then causes a biochemical signaling cascade that ultimately tells the muscle it needs to grow bigger. So how do we maximize tension on a muscle? Well, answering that question leads us into the four remaining principles. Chapter two, use bodybuilding technique. To ensure maximum tension, we need to perform exercises using a specific type of technique that I'm calling bodybuilding technique. This technique is different from powerlifting technique and it's different from how most people lift. I was at an LA fitness gym the other day and I noticed just how few people actually use bodybuilding technique. Almost nobody was taking all the boxes. The first box is lifting tempo. For bodybuilding, we generally want a controlled two to four second negative. If you're used to just letting the weight free fall, this will feel quite slow at first. But this is important because research shows that the lowering phase, or the eccentric, is very likely more important for muscle growth than the positive phase, or concentric. Yet, for whatever reason, most people lift as if the opposite were true. Most people just try to get the weight up and then forget about lowering it back down, especially as they get tired toward the end of a set. But this is a mistake because the reps toward the end of a set are the most hypertrophic and the negative is the most important part of each rep. So you really wanna control and resist the negative, especially on those last few reps. New research also indicates that for muscle hypertrophy, slower eccentric movements should be paired with faster concentric movements. This means that while you wanna go nice and slow on the negative, you should be more forceful and explosive on the positive. So if I'm doing a hack squat, I'm thinking control, control, control on the way down, and then speed as I explode on the way up. On lateral raises, I'm resisting the weight on the way down and then driving the dumbbells up and out forcefully on the positive. The same tempo should apply to most exercises in your routine. Next, bodybuilding technique means using a proper range of motion. Usually this means using a full range of motion, so you get to at least parallel on squat type exercises, and ideally a bit below parallel. You bring the dumbbells all the way down on presses until you feel a nice deep stretch in your pecs, and on pull-ups you go all the way up and all the way down. However, there is some important nuance here because recently a number of studies have shown that full range of motion isn't always better for muscle growth. Partial reps are sometimes more effective, but only when they're done in the stretched aspect of the lift. In other words, the stretched part is more hypertrophic than the squeezed part. So the bottom half of a cable curl is more important than the top half of a cable curl. The bottom half of a squat is more important than the top half of a squat. So you may not necessarily always need to use a full range of motion, but you do need to get the muscle sufficiently stretched while lifting to maximize hypertrophy. So if you're not feeling a deep stretch at the bottom of the range of motion, you should try to find that stretch by going a bit deeper. If going deeper causes you pain or serious discomfort, you can work on any flexibility or mobility deficits, or you can find a different exercise that allows you to reach that deep stretch because it really is that important. Another thing I've been noticing a lot at the gym is that most people do quite a lot of cheating on their form probably too much cheating to maximize muscle growth. That's because you can move the weight without actually applying much tension to the target muscle. For example, if I curl the weight up while leaning back and forth, I'm shifting tension away from the biceps and onto the lower back. So we wanna ensure that the target muscle is receiving most of the tension, which means keeping momentum under control. Chapter three, effort. You need to push sets hard. And unfortunately, research consistently shows that most people simply don't push their sets hard enough to maximize muscle growth. It's very common to see people hitting the gym year after year, but making no noticeable progress. In most cases, this isn't because they've maxed out their natural potential. Instead, it's usually because they simply aren't pushing their sets close enough to failure to stimulate new hypertrophy. So how hard is hard enough? And how important is going to failure? Well, since I published my last video on this topic, there's been a bombshell of a new meta-analysis that has the science-based lifting community buzzing, and I need to update a few things. First, I wanna quickly announce that I just launched my new pure bodybuilding program for pre-order over on jeffnipper.com, and we're really prioritizing effort in this program. And to manage recovery, we're focusing on choosing exercises that are safer to fail on and that generate less fatigue. This makes the workouts very fun because you can push the sets hard without feeling absolutely crushed by the end of the session. 
For example, here's a sneak peek at week one, day one of the full body version of the program. We start with three sets of cross body lat pull arounds, which offer an insane stretch on the lats. Then we do low incline Smith machine press for the pecs, which is less demanding than a free weight barbell press. Then it's on to machine hip adductions to get the legs nice and warmed up for leg press. Again, another low impact exercise that we can push harder without generating tons of fatigue. And then we finish with some face pulls and cable crunches. So by prioritizing exercises that are less costly recovery wise, we're able to push them much closer to failure without feeling completely wrecked. Anyway, you can pre-order the full 10 week plan at 30% off for the pre-sale. And I'll put a link to that in the description box down below. So this is a new meta analysis, which found that as you get closer and closer to failure, the more muscle growth you tend to see. And this is their bombshell figure that you've probably seen floating around online. Here on the x-axis, we have reps in reserve. So this point here at zero would be failure, where you couldn't do another rep if you tried. This point would be two reps shy of failure. This would be 10 reps shy of failure, all the way down to 22 reps shy of failure, which would basically just be the easiest set imaginable. And then here on the y-axis is muscle growth. And as you can see from the trend line, as you get closer and closer to failure, you see more and more muscle growth. And in fact, as you go from two reps in the tank to zero reps in the tank, muscle growth really spikes up. So naturally, a lot of people who endorse high intensity to failure training have been using this study to make their case that if you wanna maximize muscle growth, you need to push sets all the way to failure. And I do think they have a pretty good case for that training approach with this study. However, what I haven't seen them showing is this other brand new meta-analysis from 2022, which pulled 15 studies based on slightly different inclusion criteria and came to a different conclusion. Quote, there is no evidence to support that resistance training performed to momentary muscular failure is superior to non-failure resistance training for muscle hypertrophy. So what's going on here? Well, it seems that depending on which specific studies you include and how you run the statistics, you can either come away from this body of science thinking that going all the way to failure really is a lot better for muscle growth or that going all the way to failure doesn't actually offer a meaningful benefit over stopping a few reps shy. The evidence is conflicting. So what should we do practically speaking? Well, this is my takeaway. Do two to three sets on most exercises and take the last set all the way to failure. For the first one or two sets, leave one or two reps in the tank. If you were to go to failure on all sets, you'd most likely be very fatigued by the last set, which means you'd get less reps and hit less volume as a result. And we know from other research that volume is also important for muscle growth up to a point. Now, rather than do a full deep dive on training volume, I'll just put a text summary up here on screen that you guys can pause and read for more detail on that. So leave a few reps in the tank for the earlier sets and send it to hell on the last set. I also pretty much always leave a rep or two in the tank on heavy free weight compound exercises like squats, bench presses, and deadlifts, even on the last set, simply because going to failure is so disproportionately fatiguing that it's not worth the risk on these movements. But that's also part of the reason why those exercises aren't emphasized in my pure bodybuilding program. Chapter four, give your muscles a reason to grow. To build bigger muscles, we need to give them a good reason to grow. If we keep doing the exact same thing week after week and month after month, our muscle growth will fairly quickly plateau. So to keep things progressing, you need to apply the progressive overload principle where you aim to increase some training variable from week to week. Now, there are a few main ways to apply progressive overload specifically for bodybuilding. First, you can add reps at the same amount of weight. For example, on bicep curls, you could do three sets of 10 in week one, three sets of 11 in week two, three sets of 12 in week three, and then in week four, you could either go for 13 reps or you could add some weight and return back to 10 reps and then start adding reps again. This type of progression is usually better for moderate to high rep zones. You can also add weight at a fixed rep count. For example, on hack squats, you could do three sets of six reps with three plates per side in week one, and then add 10 pounds to each side each week until eventually you build up to four plates per side for the same three sets of six reps. This type of progression is usually better for lower to moderate rep zones. Eventually you'll have a week where you're not able to add weight or reps. And in this case, you should focus on improving some aspect of your technique. You can try to control the negative better, use less momentum on the positive, or improve your range of motion. I still count this as progressive overload because it increases tension on the target muscle. As a final option, you can try to improve your mind-muscle connection by really focusing on feeling the target muscle working better. Research has shown that the mind-muscle connection can increase hypertrophy in some cases, and while it may not be as effective as adding weight or reps or improving technique, it's still worth keeping in mind, especially on isolation exercises where traditional overloading becomes impractical at a certain point of strength development. Chapter five, choose high tension exercises. 
because tension is king, we need to make sure that we're choosing exercises that place high levels of tension on the target muscles. And this is where I may lose some of you, so I wanna reiterate that this advice is directed at pure hypertrophy training, not strength training or hybrid training. And so while it is true that you can build a great physique by only using barbell exercises like the squat, bench press, and deadlift, especially if you throw in a pull-up and a free weight row, this approach is probably too basic to maximize muscle growth. That's for two reasons. For one, there will be smaller muscles that go under-stimulated if this is literally all you do. Muscles like the biceps, side delts, hamstrings, and calves won't be getting enough love. And secondly, some of these exercises don't have the best stimulus to fatigue ratio. This is a term coined by Dr. Mike Isratel, and it essentially means exactly what it sounds like. The stimulus part mainly refers to how much tension the exercise delivers to the target muscle, and the fatigue part refers to how fatiguing the exercise is or how hard it is to recover from. So for example, the deadlift offers a high stimulus because it places a lot of tension on the glutes and the spinal erectors, which is great, but it also carries a very high fatigue demand. It's really hard to recover from, which isn't as great from a bodybuilding perspective. So for pure hypertrophy, we wanna at least err toward exercises that have a high stimulus to fatigue ratio. Now this doesn't mean that any exercise that causes fatigue is bad. Fatigue is an inevitable and necessary part of training. But generally speaking, if we can pick an exercise that offers just as high or higher of a stimulus for less fatigue, that's going to be a good pick. And machine and cable-based exercises are some of the best options for this. They provide massive tension for less fatigue than free weights and also tend to be safer to take to failure. Research also shows that, contrary to popular belief, machines are at least as effective as free weights in stimulating hypertrophy, and some evidence suggests that they may be superior in some cases. This shouldn't be super surprising, because machines and cables tend to have fantastic resistance profiles, where you get this smooth, even tension throughout the range of motion. For example, with a standard free weight dumbbell curl, your biceps reach their highest level of tension when the elbow is at 90 degrees and experience virtually zero tension when the bicep is fully stretched at the bottom. By contrast, the face away Bayesian cable curl offers much more continuous tension on the biceps throughout the range of motion, including in that important stretch position at the bottom. Now, I don't wanna overstate the superiority of machines and cables. Free weights have some advantages too. They're more accessible, they tend to have better strength carryover, and they may activate smaller stabilizers better. And I'm still a fan of the barbell. I love the squat, bench, and deadlift, and I think that strength can fit neatly into a hypertrophy plan if programmed correctly. But if we're designing a program purely dedicated to muscle growth, that's a recovery wrinkle we don't need to worry about. Plus, we already know that having some exercise variety and novelty is good for muscle growth, and doing the same exercises month after month and year after year can get stale. There are a few other things that can impact muscle growth, but are relatively less important. Your training split is essentially just a way of organizing your workouts throughout the week, and as long as it fits your schedule, allows you to push your sets hard, do enough volume, and recover between workouts, it'll work just fine. Full body routines, upper lower splits, push pull leg splits, and even modified body part splits are all effective options. Also, rest periods seem to matter somewhat for muscle growth. Resting at least one minute between sets is generally better than resting for less than one minute, so be careful not to rush through your workout as it can limit your recovery between sets. And then there are specialized hypertrophy techniques like long length partials, myo reps, and drop sets, which can all be helpful for driving continued progress beyond the beginner stage. Now, I'm gonna cover at least five or six of these techniques in an upcoming mini series, so make sure you're subscribed and have a lookout for that within the next month. And again, if you're looking for a program to kickstart some new growth, I'd recommend checking out my pure bodybuilding program over on jeffnipper.com. If you pre-order, you'll not only get 30% off, you'll also get the hypertrophy handbook sent to you right away, which covers everything you need to know about training for muscle growth. And you'll get the pure bodybuilding nutrition booklet right away so you can get your diet on track as well. You'll also get all three versions of the pure bodybuilding program when you pre-order. So you'll get the push pull legs, full body, and upper lower versions of the program. After the pre-order week is over, you'll just select which one version of the program you want unless you wanna buy all three separately. Each version of the program also includes a weak points and arm day, so you can prioritize whatever your individual weak point is. And I included the dedicated arm work because it's a really fun workout, it's a great pump, and arms are super important for bodybuilding. This is definitely not like any of my other programs, and I filmed over 200 private exercise demos specifically for this program that each come with specific coaching cues and tutorials from me. There's a lot of new exercises in here that I think you guys are really gonna love. So you can click the link over here next to my head if you wanna check that out. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.